Something very cool with these levers, and we have some Shimano ones that are actually on our Patreon build. There's a spring um, right before it meets the rest of the brake lever. Oh crap, I got a brake. The lever gets out of my way and it goes right back in the place where it needs to be. Where does the lever come in? Uh, it gets out of your way so I can brake because I go from uh, gripping So I ask you this. again, are you having problems with ones that don't do that? The ones that don't do that, I'm not going to say I have problems with okay, it, but the well, ones that don't do so it... So it's a solution to something that's not a problem is what you're saying. It, it, look, you guys all know what I'm talking about. Wolfman's never <laughs> ridden Blue Jay. He doesn't know what the hell he's talking about over there. He writes I don't need bikes. to ride Blue Jay. Anyway. All what right, guys. Blue Jay you have to do? You can't, this is a break. We're talking about breaks. You're talking about riding Blue Jay. 99.9% .9 of the people watching have never ridden Blue Jay. <laughs> Get off my hand. My Why is that light like that? Why is it smashed? I gotta fix it. I don't know. Did you just burp? No. Wolf Tick Nation. Thank you guys for tuning in oh, to once kabucha. again another Wolf Tick Videos episode. We are excited that you guys are here because on today's episode, we've got an all new break that we are uh, not only going to be doing initial impressions on today, but we will be doing a real time review on a later episode. So if you guys want to see what these new breaks are all about, how they perform, make sure you guys turn the notification bell on. All right. Now, the breaks that we are going to be doing initial impression and install are the new Ceram DB8. Hydraulic four piston Ceram's first ever what? Also known as Ceram. Um, first ever high, uh, mineral oil. mineral oil break. Break, yeah, mm -hmm. whatever. Now these things are. About, I'm getting bit up by mosquitoes, so I'm a little distracted. Now these brakes are four piston. They look the part. We're fixing to check them out, and then we're going to install them, of course. Uh, these brakes can go for about $137 or about $64, $65 for the front and the rear. We'll put some fill links in the description below. All right. Also on today's episode, we're going to be doing a little bit of everybody's Wait, favorite segment, Wolf Tick Nation. Don't say it like that. People get all excited thinking they're going to say a viewer's rides or something. No. We're doing a little bit of mail time, baby. A little bit of mail time. We're going to be opening up mail sent from all over the world so you guys get to see what uh, some of our viewers, maybe some companies had to had to send us. And then uh, maybe you can also look forward to a later episode of us possibly using something like that. All right? So um, the install is going to be going on my favorite bike ever. It's one of my favorite frames. This is the Mongoose Ardor. And we've got three of them. So, uh, yeah, well, three of the frames. I, I don't I don't know if it's your favorite bike ever. It's definitely one of your it's gotta favorite It's got to be my favorite frame ever. To, yeah. It's the Mongoose Ardor. This is Project Ron Burgundy. It's been a minute since it's been seen on the channel. So after we get done taking a look at these brakes before the install, I do want to do a once-over um, and kind of explain to you guys what all we got going on the build so you can understand kind of the bike a little bit more. And then we can all be looking forward to when I take this thing and shred it downhill, baby, and using these four-piston brakes. Is the tire on backwards or is it right? That's correct. All right, guys, so here they are, the Ceram DB8 four-piston hydraulic brakes. Oh, yeah, these were sent to us by uh, one of our patrons, old big brother Kevin H. Thank you so much for uh, just taking care of us and sending us these brakes, guys. There's nothing more. I don't know, like, forks are great. Fork reviews are great, but brakes, they seem like they're just all over the place. It's one of the things I get most excited about, especially when a brake comes in like this. And what I mean like this, guys, is they're completely connected. There's no bleeding, yeah. um, no having to add oil, nothing like that. They're already put together and just ready to stick on the bike and, and try them out it and, all that. and review it's it. not a permanent install, but and I want to give people an idea what they're like from the factory. Yeah. Uh, I will disagree. They, to me, they don't even hold a candle to a fork as far as... Well, fork videos are great. Preference, because I like the fork videos. I think they're a little more... I mean, they're... I don't, well, I don't know. I would say they're a little more cut and dry, but I guess they're not the ratings and all that. But still, I think it's... I don't know. I, I think the forks are the best, but brakes are definitely up there. Not as popular as the forks, but they are up there. Yeah. Brake episodes are some of my favorites, and I love installs because they're just clean and easy most of the time if we don't have to uh, bleed them. So uh, these db 8 should be going on pretty quick, and then uh, we'll be getting to some mail time. But a very good-looking brake, and let me tell you guys something. This right here feels super quality. And for $137, you know, it should be um, pretty good quality. I just hope that the stopping power for Ceram's first-ever mineral oil brake is um, we, it's going to be sure good. the first-ever ones? Yeah, first-ever. I know uh, Big Brother Kevin H was all excited about it. Okay. Um, so here is the clamp, right, for the uh, right side the way it should be. Right side is going to be the rear because we're in America. Okay. So there we go. There are all the UKers out there. I know you guys always hate on that. So it comes with a ceram bleed block, all right, four-piston bleed block 
Definitely got a lot of these for two pistons, but it's nice to have a four piston, and that's an 11 millimeter thick. Uh, looks like we have an adjustment tool because apparently these brakes do not have a contact adjustment, but they do have a throw adjustment. And there's a very cool design that I've been doing some research on reading. We have gotten olive here. Uh, pretty different looking olive. It's red. But again, in case you do have to bleed these brakes or cut them down, or if you're running an internal, that's one of the reasons we picked the R door. Uh, you'll definitely need this stuff to do so. Um, it comes with everything pretty much to get the job done except for mineral oil. And it wants, to use, uh, wants you to use Ceram mineral oil. It comes with a barb. All right, we've got some mounting hardware for the caliper, and then we've got this little thing here. I'm guessing that's to keep the hoses together. All right, so that's the stuff it comes with, and also we've got disc and hydraulic brake manuals and uh, all that good stuff. I'm sure there's a little bit of information, some safety instructions in there as well, but super cool, super simple and to the point. Let's go and take a closer look at these levers and the uh, caliper, and let's see if these pistons actually all work together, and I want to show you guys a new design that they've done with the lever. So let's take a look at this DB8 caliper. Is that thing massive or what? Let's take this little block out of there. A whole bunch of room there to get a bunch of airflow so these things do not overheat. Now I have been doing a little bit of research and uh, I want to let you guys know that these pads, we're going to take a closer look at them. These pads are actually um, steel backed uh, organic pads. I did a little bit of research on the pads in case uh, you know we need some new pads over time or if we want to do an upgrade. Stock pads are going to be about $23 on Amazon and you can also get some metallic which I'm a, more of a fan of on the metallic style. Metallic pads run you about $27. Bucks. So if you guys have these brakes I guess the pads are called code pads. I don't know if that's an older brake of, uh, that Ceram offers or not. But uh, let's also take a look and see if all four of these pistons are working. Wow, these things feel super solid, man. They feel very good in the hand. And you can see the two pistons there. Kind of a different design. It kind of looks like there's some grooves cut in the pistons themselves. I wonder if that's for heat dissipation. All right, so let's give this a soft squeeze here. Just a little, the smallest of squeeze. Yes, you guys see all those? Wow, they're all working in sync. Dude, that is beautiful. That's a beautiful piece of machinery. Look at that. They're all working. Very cool. So we'll put the pads back in here, and I want to explain to you guys the lever design on these DB8s. I was looking for the bleed port on this where we look at the lever, and the bleed port is actually on the back side right here. It even says Ceram Mineral Oil, and this tool I thought was for the throw adjustment is actually for the bleed port. So it does come with something you can actually bleed that with. Lever design looks okay. It doesn't have as much of like a lip that I want right here, so I'm not sure how they're really going to feel on the fingers. Okay, so that's kind of a, a downside that I'm seeing it does feel a little chancy because it's just like a punched out piece of aluminum but the big design that I keep on talking about the new lever design is optimized for tool access now whenever you're adjusting your throw adjustment we do the uh, real-time review I'll probably mess with the throw adjustment right here is the throw adjustment can you guys see that throw adjustments right there um, again there is no type of contact adjustment just a throw adjustment but it is super out in the open I don't know how many times I've gone to um, kind of mess with the throw adjustment on a lever and I was just so upset because it was super hard to reach. This guy here, after we get it installed, we do the real-time review, we'll be doing the uh, throw adjustment on the trail and I'm really curious to see how easy this thing is actually to get to. So something interesting with this that I'm looking at, if you have it mounted here, like say you are from the UK and you do want to mount this thing backwards, right? Because they're all backwards. <laughs> Check this out. Mineral oil bleed valve is right here, right? On the top side. Okay. If you flip it over upside down and you put this lever on the opposite side, there's also mineral oil on the back side, uh, another bleed port. So I wonder if it's intended to mount this way mm. or this mm. way. That is cool. Cause this way obviously is American. The of that? Yeah, that's the purpose of that. that. And that way there is for the UKers. <laughs> so you can mount it either way. You can mount it either way. How and cool is that? have the same functioning. Yeah, we could be happy, old Matt Ward. Okay. Did, did, Dan, did Dan Boys, did he ever clarify the brake being ran on the right in his household? Absolutely, they all do. So they, he that's, runs the rear brake on the right? That's how they raise them there in the UK. No, 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 they do the opposite. Oh, yeah, he puts his on the left. All right, guys, let's get into uh, looking at this Mongoose Ardor Project Ron Burgundy. Let's do a little bike check on it, and then uh, we'll get to installing these brakes. I'm, I'm excited about these. 
All right, guys, so before we install the ceramic brakes, I want to do a little bit of a bike check on the Mongoose Ardor. This one here, it's definitely the Wolf Tick Diva Edition. I love this bike. I love this frame. Tapered head tube. Uh, of course, it is a hard tail, and we've done a bunch of upgrades. Pretty much the only thing that is stock on this bike at this moment is the seat and the seat post tube. Everything other than that is all aftermarket. And again, you guys can watch all of the builds um, that we put together on this bike. Uh, we've got the Bellany Factory King of the Jungle inverted fork up front. Still going. Yeah, still going really strong. And uh, we're going to be doing the real time review with these brakes. We might even talk about this bike a little bit. Um, it's the 680 fork up there. Uh, it's a super interesting fork and it gets a whole bunch of uh, comments from everybody. Like everybody always wonders how that fork is doing. And so far, so good. You know, it has really been a minute since we've shown this bike, but I'm looking forward to kind of bringing it back around so everybody can watch the real time review on these brakes. Uh, we've got a wake stem. Uh, pretty flashy little stem there with a 780 wake bar. Never had any problems with wake bars or wake stems. They get a lot of crap talk because I think they're more of the budget, like big time budget. And everybody always says, oh, well, you don't want that. It's going to bend. It's going to break. I've had one bar break in it, or bend as far as aluminum goes. And that wake one, we've ran those on a lot of bikes. Uh, we're running an Advent 9-speed group set. And this is the Advent derailleur that does not have the clutch. And it's decently silent. We just add this little... Uh, foam chain stay protector on here and it, it, it gets the job done. It kind of minimizes uh, minimizes the amount of chain slap. Uh, we got Rock Bro pedals on here with a Ceram hollow uh, crank set and uh, we're running the Maxxis Minion DHF tire up front, big old tractor tire, so it's going to be perfect for a little bit of downhill action. And we've got the Ground Control Sport flat jacket tire we just put on the rear. And if you guys are curious about that tire, what it will fit and what it won't, maybe you own a GT Aggressor Pro. We just did that video too, um, different tire sizes. So that's actually one we had a uh, did a little demo on the GT Aggressor Pro. I just said that I gotta put those. I gotta put links to other videos of the dirt jumper. Uh, excuse the frogs. Yeah, sorry about the frogs, yeah, guys. It's summertime, and the frogs are Our going pool's to, over there. You know, it's crazy. Above um, ground. We're not uppity. Yeah, uh, yeah, above <laughs> ground. All right. Uh, and the last thing that we've got on uh, Project Ron Burgundy, uh, the Mongoose Ardor, we're running some MT200 hydraulic brakes. They are just two-piston. But for the money, you can't beat those. You know what I mean? Those are some of the best brakes um, on, the, on the market, in my opinion, as far as, uh, as budget's concerned. Like, they are just super good. We've got them on, like, five or six different bikes. Super Affordable. We'll also be putting the fit link in the description below uh, for these. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, start with the process of installing these new Cerams and then we will get to some mail time. All right, guys, about to take the Shimano MT200 caliper off so of the front right back off, huh? of the fork. Well, we're about to take it off, but I want you, well, not you, I want you guys at home tell me what's wrong with this. What, what is wrong with this? Do you guys see that there? What is wrong? up here leave it in the comments i'm gonna fix that and then we'll get to uh we'll get to it's take been it like off. that for a long time you refuse to change it yeah, so i was about to put the um the brake lever on here and there's something interesting and you guys correct me if i'm wrong this here is the clamp, right? And the clamp goes over the bar like so. This little piece here goes directly through that eyelet. Can you guys see that eyelet? It goes directly through the eyelet like so, and that clamps all the way around like that. Well, basically we'll face the other way. I'm kind of backwards right now. I'm doing the UK thing. But this one here, is this, if you were to run some type of derailleur, up front or a dropper maybe you see this little screw there um, and we're going to take that off because it kind of has a, another bolt to mount it to on the back side uh let me know is that for a shifter or is that for a dropper the um the right side or the rear has this as well just kind of uh curious on what this is exactly let me know in the comments guys So you guys can uh, go ahead and leave it in the comments if I'm an idiot or not. Are you an idiot? Well, I mean, that's that's to be determined from that's, the Wolf Tick Nation. I, uh, I don't think it takes them to determine I that. installed the rear brake a certain way. 
Because look, let's face it, we don't want to cut these down because we want to give you guys an honest and fair review of these SRAM DB8 uh, brakes, right? The, the, so I'm getting at... The brakes need to be tested in the way that they come to us to yeah, start. Absolutely. And I love that these are all put together and ready to go, right? Pre-blood, ready to go, put them on your bike and get it. Oh, the issue is like with most bikes uh, or with most brake kits is they give you a longer rear and that's to make up for if you are running a, a 29er. You know what I'm saying? Or if you got some internal routing, you have to use a little bit extra. This here is a 27.5 hardtail. It, it's so, for different size bikes, bike frames and stuff. I don't know about the 29er. It doesn't have to be a 29er. Well, a 29er should be bigger, but, but Wolfman's right, bigger bike frame. Okay. Uh, when it comes to the rear, we didn't want to cut this thing down at all. So, again, you can call me an idiot or not. I think I'm a genius. I went ahead and routed around the uh, chain stay. Look at that. <laughs> what are you? You are really tooting your own horn. I rode around the chain stay. I mean, <laughs> what, what's or else it would have had a big old bird's nest up here, as Big Brother Kevin H calls it, and it just okay. would have been bad all over. So I went ahead well, and did gonna that. You're going to get told some crap. I'm oh, sure. I know I am. People are going to talk some crap. Is it putting tension on the caliper? No, 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 no. It's it's okay. just about as much tension as would be on there normally. So it shouldn't break, affect the brakes whatsoever. Uh, I want <laughs> to talk about this. People are going to have some things to say. Oh, they're going to have some things to say. I did want to talk about the brake feel real quick. Um, and again, this isn't a real time review. Initial impressions. And there's a feature not only the um, quick access to adjust the throw on these, which I really like with the whole new ceram lever design. But uh, there's a feature on here. We've had some, I believe, Shimano brakes that do this. I'm not sure what the name is, but can you guys see this lever? Do, Sometimes. Real quick, do we know? This is all new design stuff. You keep mentioning it's the new, yeah. new, new, new. I've researched, yeah. Okay, well. Okay. Um, something very cool with these levers, and we have some Serrano ones that are actually on our Patreon build, one of our Patreon builds that have the same style of lever. There's a spring um, right before it meets the rest of the brake lever. And if I'm going at it and I'm doing a one finger action, Okay, we go a two finger action and then I'm about to hit some nasty downhill and I got a whole bunch of flow. I'm just going to go ahead and grip onto my little thin grip here. And these are corkies, by the way. MTB Alex is going to fill me with this. So I'm getting it. I'm holding on to the grip, right? And then I go, oh crap, I got a break. If I go to lift my middle finger up, what happens? I hit the lever. But the very cool design with these levers is the little spring in there allows me to run my finger forward. The lever gets out of my way and it goes right back in the place where it needs to be. Whether it's two fingers, three fingers, one finger, it goes right back to the same exact spot because it actually allows me to put tension negatively on that lever and move forward out of my way. So I go from gripping to here, gripping, gripping to here. Gloves on you, I'm gonna feel that. That is such a cool feature. These are ready for some downhill action. I can't wait. Turn notifications on, all right? Don't forget uh, to turn them on because you ain't gonna to wanna to miss the real-time review when we take this thing down, hopefully, uh, Mount Nebo, the Hayes Creek Black Diamond downhill, all right? And we'll probably mess That's with the Hayes throw. Run. We'll probably mess with the throw adjustment as well. Uh, but without further ado, let's all get into a little bit of mail time. How about that? Beep, 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 beep. This right Dude. here all came in kind of at once. You know what I'm saying? Well, Surprise crap yeah, maybe. most of it. Hey guys, if this is your favorite segment, which I know it is, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you ain't part of Wolf Dick Nation. It's free. Let's do this. Let's see what we got. This one's kind of heavy. I have no idea. I know, I noticed that. It's, yeah, it's, it's very a little heavy. lumpy. Or what can it be? What can it be? Pull the box and... Whoa. Was it glue oh, in there? Man. Oh, man. Wow. Oh, that is cool. West Biking Bike Lock. Folding bike lock. Check that out. Oh, I know who this is from. I know who this is from. Who's it from? This is from our boys over at Varla Scooter. Oh, is it? Oh, it's like a chain. That is crazy. And I guess you just put it into this guy here. I like the compactness. And you can strap that to your bike. Yeah, it's pretty Isn't cool. Isn't that cool? Guys, you want to check out this on uh, Varla's website? We'll put a link in the description below. That is just neat, man. How you can just put that in there and you're good to go on your bike. You good know? straps, I guess, with that. Yeah, there. that is awesome. Next piece of mail. Let's right do there. this. All right, there is no notage. No notage. Oh, okay. We ordered this too. Oh. Well, not that we ordered that. All right, came in two packages. I forgot about these. So we always need, anybody that works on bikes and does a lot of fork stuff, you guys all know that one of the most important things is going to be spacers because the last thing you want to do is cut your steer tube too short. So I've been on Wolfman for a long time now. Hey, we need some spacers. We need some spacers. We need some spacers. We got not, some. Not cutting tubes too short. And those are super damn uh, budget. And we got these because we have got some uh, tire inserts that uh, require a Schrader valve. I even know they made these things the other day well, until we went to a damn bike shop. Require a Schrader valve. 
No, the rims that we are going to convert to tubeless and then put some tire inserts in um, are Schrader only. I didn't even know that they made Schrader tubeless valves. I always thought that they were just Presta. All right, this one here. Oh, buddy, I know what this is. This right here is for our patron build. Oh, okay, yeah. Yes. Oh, oh, wow. This is the patron fancy. build. Oh. Wow, is that kinda, awesome or yeah, what? That's nice. All black, baby. This right here is for Project Chung. Well, well, that's looks, sweet, looks man. That's nice. Yeah, it's called Black Diamond. All right. That's nice. Well, you're really gazing at it. All right. This one here is from one of our supporters. Part of the Wolf Tick Nation. You know who it is. Do you? I don't know. Who is LeBron it? LeBron Photo. Not .com. It has an accent. It has a few other rides. Uh, I think back in the day he was a roadie. And, I think uh, he still does a little bit of roadies. I think he does. We were just going back and forth on some emails about some breaks, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Uh, hello, Jeremiah and John. I'm still enjoying the content you two create. Missing some of the time trial time comparisons between bikes upgraded and not, but it's all good anyway. You guys are still entertaining to watch. I'm still riding my Schwinn Axon DP, primarily, mm -hmm. although I also have a Kent 27.5 e-bike, uh, MTB that I purchased recently. After seeing your brake test of the two pre-mechanical disc brakes, I looked online and found these Zoom brakes that work similarly. Lebron Photo parentheses not, not com. com. All right. right, all right. So these are double actuated piston mechanical brakes, Zoom brand. Oh yeah, do you guys see that? Is it actioning? That's Let's smooth. See if it's actioning. Thank you Thank for you. sending us these, yes. man. That's awesome. Mel time, ooh, gotta love it. Ooh, man. Oh, I know what this is. Oh. Yeah, I was. This was some drunken eBay right here. Oh yeah, yeah. This was some drunken eBay, guys. This here, this um, is it called Trucker or yeah, Trucker Company? Only stuff I've ever used. It's the best I've ever used. It's also the worst. <laughs> uh, Berserker Nick, Wolfman knows what these yeah, are just for. Just put the knife away. You can you can rip it from here. Just put the knife away. Oh wow. Oh, do they feel good? Kenda K Rad, 26 by 2.3 inch dirt jumper tires, Berserker. That's yeah, awesome. That's gonna make that. You're, you're gonna end up. Whoa! Oh, this is what we needed on the bikes. We only had one pair of 26 sitting around. Look at was, that. You know, and it wasn't for it wasn't no for that, but it was just we used them temporarily. Oh, those This are is cool, gonna make man. that bike fun to ride, right? Oh, these things are gonna be super fast. We gotta put a new rear brake on there, and we also have to put on that uh, this chain tensioner over here yeah. that Berserker also sent uh, us. Yeah, Berserker. We didn't forget about that. Okay. Berserker Nick, thank you for the Dirt Jumper Tires. Are you drunk? Berserker Nick, thank you for the Kenda Dirt Jumper Tires. I can't wait to, uh, and we, I can't wait to ride these things and work on that bike again. Yeah. What I like too is they're multi-directional. And this here is from our boy, our patron, old Raxman80. Raxman got me the butt just, just dropped. That's right. Dude. I'm all right. Let's see what we got here, Raxman. I'll tell it's you guys what. It's always exciting look. getting packages from Raxman. Raxman is a man of mystery. I mean, it's always a surprise. Okay, I think we're easy to figure out. This thing right here is kind of heavy. Oh, yes. dude. Uh-oh. Oh, hell yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Look at that. We hit the mother load. Dude. Rax man, you're too good to us, man. Oh man. We hit the mother Look load. At that. Hell yeah. Dude. <laughs> Rax man got him and the butt just dropped. We got 29ers. We've got 27 fives. Uh hell yeah, dude. We are hooked We're up set. now. You know what? Huh. I wonder if this was on the Ascension video when I was taking it down the mountain. Uh, what video was that? When I broke the derailleur. That was just recent. That was doing the, uh, you're reviewing the brakes. the brakes. I was reviewing the brakes and at the bottom, when I was changing the tube out, I said, man, I really could use some more tubes. That right there you're was just the awesome. You were talking about the tube vending machine too, weren't you? Yeah, this, or this is must be stock for it. Man, that is, I'm going to put these in my riding bin. That's exciting. That is awesome, Rax man. man thank we you are so much set. for that. Thank you. That, that is, that's great. That's great. You can't have too many on hand. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Well, that was the mail time segment. Um, our patrons old racks man berserker nick thank you so much um not a patron but a hell of a supporter oh yeah, lebron but... photo 
not.com. Thank you uh, for the breaks, man. Yeah, the zooms. Yeah, that's yeah. Wolf Tick Nation. Um, everybody that sent us a little bit of mail. Yeah, very awesome. Nice mail time. Yeah, very appreciative. So thank you guys so much. Uh, we've got definitely some more content for you guys. So make sure you guys are looking forward to that. Again, please hit that notification. Make sure you're looking forward to it. <laughs> make sure you are, okay? If you're not, if something's wrong, all right? <laughs> hit that like button and uh, hit that subscribe button if you ain't a part of the Wolf Tick Nation. Everybody, we will see you on the next episode. I can't wait to ride my Wolf Tick Diva Edition Mongoose Ardor Project Ron Burgundy. Yeah.